on. There we have it. So you see, if you look at the usual pyramid uh, and you try to take a photograph of it, which is a way to deal with higher dimensions, you just see what you do to put 3D into 2D. If you look at this, you will see a point in the middle, yes, and then uh, triangles. Triangles are the usual two-dimensional thing. Or if you look at it this way, the point in the middle is in the back, yes? So uh, similarly, uh, from 3D to 4D, here you can see a point in the middle, yes? That's a tip to the fourth dimension in height, yes? And you can see this way uh, five pyramids. One is the usual one outside in white, and you have one on every face going toward the middle. Yes, so this uh, thing is very useful when, uh, when doing four-dimensional computations. The edge three is here. Uh, this doesn't have uh, the intersection points uh, like this one. Very good. And now uh, let us... Yes, we're going to do a higher representation theory. So, uh, yeah. We're going to do matrix units, uh, the way the matrix units act on the pyramid, the uh, way to make tunnels to bend, uh, bend the vectors. So the action of uh, higher matrices on vectors, which is what representations do. So we should, uh, however, make a background for this, otherwise uh, it won't uh, uh, look good. So um, here we will start, we shall start with the uh, usual three-dimensional pyramid. And as promised, uh, at the very beginning of the course, we'll do the uh, Klebsch-Gordon coefficients, if you remember. Uh, so for the Klebsch-Gordon coefficients, you have to, uh, uh, what you have is a, uh, is a tetrahedron So this is what representation theory does. It has uh, uh, matrices and vectors, and the matrices act on uh, vectors. Uh, and we are going to do with the self adjointness is extremely important in the higher case. And uh, to describe this action, this is uh, uh, very combinatorial because we work with, uh, so we're going to do the high analog of the gelfand settlin uh, representation. And uh, so moving the vectors will, be, will take quite a bit of work. So here we are with the, uh, with the pyramid, and uh, we have at the bottom an intertwiner. So this is an intertwiner. Remember in the other uh, picture of the intertwiner, we had, uh, we had uh, something like this. So uh, this is a corresponding honeycomb. Let me uh, uh, place, uh, uh, let me place, let me color it uh, somewhat differently. We're going to have, uh, do you see the, the, uh, the triangle which you have above? Do you see this triangle? And we have one, uh, so we're going to do here two things. Here is going to be maybe three. And uh, uh, so if we don't do this, then we couldn't uh, very well see what's going on in general. So this is, a, uh, uh, this is an intertwiner. Remember, it appears as a... As a uh, honeycomb, and we're going to uh, put here 
You see the uh, a, uh, uh, yes. So A little bit simplified here. These are also on a honeycomb. So, so as you see, this is what uh, this is a usual intertwiner. So this picture should look very familiar uh, after this course. Uh, this is a this is a. Uh, a symmetrizer. And you have here some multiplicity. The multiplicity here is three. As you can see here, it's two, and here it's three. Yes, so let's uh, write it. The multiplicity here is three, two, uh, three, and two on these blades. Yes, so this is exactly the intertwiner. So it's an intertwiner of SL2 written extremely explicitly you put here vectors, you write symmetrized vectors as tensors, as symmetric tensors, and you do the pairing exactly as shown by the picture. Yes, in addition, you, uh, you choose here some, uh, uh, some way for each intertwiner to put that uh, half blob that we discussed to make it a representation of SL2 rather than the fake SL2. So this is a base. This is what we have on the base. And uh, uh, what do we have on the, on the faces? So on the faces, we have uh, uh, vectors Eij. And something similar in the back. So after, if you have any question, I mean, we'll have vectors and we'll have matrices acting on vectors. And this would take uh, uh, today for the, for the example in which these appear to show that they do appear in, uh, in nature. And, uh, in the, and further on today and uh, Wednesday, we'll do the, the actual action. So these are the vectors. So this is E1 uh, on the face one, let's say E2 on the face one, E1 on the face two, E2 on the face two, and similarly in the back. So this is a, a representation, and uh, for the representation, uh, uh, of uh, uh, SL, so here in a triangle, let's detail it. This is a representation which we had studied before. So here is a, uh, the number here, the multiplicity is, is five. As you can see, two plus three is five. So here we have uh, the representation sigma five of spin. Uh, five halves. Remember, we work with a degree which is twice, twice the spin. And uh, from this representation, we take maybe, let's say, two uh, uh, edges this way, and uh, three uh, and uh, three edges this way. So we have some multiplicities here. 
Yes, so this would be here. This reads as, so this is E2, this is E1. And this one reads as the vector is E1 to the power 3 E2 square. Yes, so this is the vector. And uh, remember that our uh, matrix unit E12, E12, E12 takes uh, E2 into E1. So it takes uh, this one into E1 to the fourth, E2 to the one, yes? And uh, times a coefficient. And we're going to uh, simplify, in this case, the coefficient is going to be uh, 4 is the power of uh, E1 here. So uh, we did take before a balanced coefficient, but uh, that would, uh, that can be easily, this one can be easily adjusted and for our computation this will be better. Uh, and similarly for E21, you take the coefficient of uh, the power of E2. Yes, so these are the unbalanced uh, coefficients. And uh, now, uh, what we want to have, this is a klebsch gordon coefficients. Remember that these were the things that, uh, that are so widely used in physics and in, uh, in uh, chemistry that people uh, put them, uh, as you remember, uh, course, uh, main, there was a uh, 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 three, I think three J. So this is the, uh, this is a diagram with these coefficients, which is, which is published by uh, the National Institute of Standards for the 3J symbol, and uh, if you remember that, it's, uh, it's available on T-shirts. So it's a, it's a very uh, uh, widely used, uh, used uh, um, set of numbers in, in uh, experimental physics. And what we are going to do is to explain the formula and show also how you'd obtain the formula. Um, so what's important here is, uh, what's important is a fundamental idea that you have a, uh, uh, you have the uh, vector on the outside, on the boundary of, uh, the simplex and the computation happens inside it. That's what we proposed at the very beginning, that, uh, that space does computation. So let's check now uh, what is the problem. Uh, the problem is the following. Let me uh, lift here. So the problem is uh, you act with uh, SL2 uh, on, uh, on the tensor product uh, sigma 1, to, which is N1 tensor sigma N2 Tens uh, sigma n three on the third position. Uh, the upper index just indicates the position. And uh, let me lower the. 
So this would be here n1. This is n2, which is equal to 5. And in the back, we have n3. Please, if you have any kind of question, uh, you, should, uh, you should ask it. Uh, so we have the, uh, the representation SL2 acts all the tensor product. And the uh, reason why this is so widely used is that you have a tensor product. That means that you have three independent spins. And according to, uh, uh, according to, uh, quant to the quantum, uh, let's say, measurement or information theory, uh, you can measure just one of them. Uh, so you can measure the n for the others, which does commute, but you cannot measure all three vectors. So the question is that you measure one of them, for instance, a spin, some orbital spin for the atom, and, uh, and uh, you want to know the information that you have about the others. So this is what you want. So uh, what we want is an invariant or rather an invariant vector, uh, which is xi in, uh, in the v sigma 1 tens uh, v sigma 2 tens uh, v sigma 3. And uh, uh, so, uh, we want the invariant vector, so this one for SL2. Uh, this is uh, xi uh, exists, xi non zero, of course, exists. if and only if uh, n1, uh, n2, n3 satisfy the triangle, triangle inequality and uh, n1 plus n2 plus n3 is even and in that case, uh, what we have are the corners here, which are, uh, so if this is n1, n2, n3, and this should be n2, n3. Uh, this uh, multiplicity, for instance, is equal to n3, uh, n, n2 plus n3 minus n1, everything over 2. Yes, so as you can see here, uh, these, so this condition is precisely equivalent to the fact that, uh, uh, that, this, that these numbers exist and their integer and they're bigger than or equal to zero. So and in that case let's write here so again four SL two If xi exists, it is unique. Yes, so it's known that uh, uh, three representations 
of SL2, uh, if they have a, a, a finite, I, I mean, if they have an invariant vector, that one's unique. So, uh, So now, um, what, how the vector xi look like? So the vector xi is going to be a, uh, a sum of uh, coefficients of uh, uh, let's say. Uh, Let me keep the notation from there. Uh, times, let's, A tends B tends C. This is a coefficient which depends on A, B, C. And A, B, C are vectors. On the faces. So they are exactly like the vector that you see in blue at the top. Yes, some power of E1 times some power of E2. So for all these powers, for each of these powers, we need a coefficient. Now, um, what does it mean that xi is invariant to the, remember that this is a differential which means Lie algebra action of uh, E12, E21, and uh, H12, which is E11 minus E22. And the differential action is uh, uh, in Lee. Uh, for Lie algebras is written exactly like the, by the Leibniz rule. So uh, uh, any uh, matrix unit uh, M, so let's write here M, uh, M of uh, A tends B tends C is equal to MA tends B tends C plus A tends MB tends C plus and so on. So on a tensor product, you act on each term and you add up the results. So uh, let us look first at H. So first of all, H, one, two, uh, so let's call this E12, which is equal to E, E21, which is equal to F, and H12, which is equal to H. These are the usual notations in uh, when we have a single SL2. So now H of E1 uh, to the power uh, K, let's put it, left and right, E1 to the power left one, tens uh, E2 to the power right one, is going to be, as we did when we studied SL2, is going to be L1 minus R1, times the same, E1 to the L1, tends uh, E2 to the R1.
So this is the action of the diagonal element. Uh, now uh, let's see what is the equation star. So star for H is the equation which states that the sum of the Li's minus the sum of the Ri's is equal to zero. Yes, that's exactly, uh, each of them is multiplying by the left minus the right. Yes, so the sum is equal to zero. By the way, if you, uh, uh, since we are here, we didn't do maybe enough of uh, the usual representation theory. Uh, the idea is that uh, if you have uh, the Lie group, then uh, A of uh, V tends W is equal to AV tends uh, AW. While if you have the Lie algebra or the differential, action, then you write A is equal to 1 plus uh, epsilon uh, x. And in that case, if you expand this, you'll see immediately that this is um, A of uh, AV tends uh, AW is equal to V tends W plus uh, eps, plus uh, xv plus epsilon times a uh, v uh, excuse me xv tends uh, w plus uh, v tends uh, xw plus some term which is of the order epsilon square. So, uh, so you see that the differential action acts on each vector and then adds up the results. Very good, so now we should lift it And uh, uh, so the idea now is the following that if we, so you're looking at the, uh, again, this is our, uh, this is uh, our simplex. And here we have uh, uh, triangles This is very important, and squares. Triangles and squares. So you can see here that uh, each, each, uh, so the line at the bottom, which was uh, yellow. So this is part of an intertwiner. Now this lifts either to a, uh, to uh, square, and remember that we had here the coordinates, let me be consistent there, one should be opposite one, uh, two is, should be opposite two and three. So the coordinate at the top is zero, and uh, excuse me,
Yes. Okay. So each of the intertwiners can uh, uh, can uh, uh, lift inside to either a, uh, a triangle, and remember that the triangle was separating the coordinates into 0 to 1. 0, 1, 2, do you see or in the back, versus 3. So this is 0, 1, 2, versus 3. That's what we did last time. Or in a square, and if we want to write it rigorously, then this is, uh, uh, as you see here, it's 0, 3. So this is 1, 2, and 0, 3. So these are, these are blades which are obtained by putting the uh, vertex on one side or on the other. So, uh, now the condition that the sum of, so each, uh, each intertwiner produces one left and and one right. Do you see? The red one produces here a right and here a left. The blue one produces here a left and here a right. Yes, so altogether one left and one right. So the condition that the sum of Li is equal to the sum of right i, this is equivalent to the fact that the vectors on the surface can be made the uh, boundary of blades inside. So this is a fundamental thing in the higher theory that, as you see, you have, a, uh, you have at the bottom an intertwiner, and what we have inside are now blades. So these blades do the computation for us. And uh, the formula, which was seen by, uh, by Wigner, Wigner computed it with some uh, uh, sp using some spherical integrals. The reason for the spherical integrals is very simple. Um, if you want an invariant vector, you take an arbitrary vector and you average it over the action. Yes, it's obvious that if you average it over the action, what you will get is something invariant. The only thing you have to be wary of is that you could get zero. Yes, so as long as you make sure that you don't get zero, you will get this way an invariant vector. So that's how Wigner, uh, Wigner uh, computed it. And so in any case, the theorem is that the, the invariant uh, the uh, the coefficient of uh, the invariant vector the coefficients of the invariant vector xi are are the sum of plus minus, and we'll detail this, one over the product of uh, each, uh, over each square, uh, so of the square factorial uh, times the product over each, we should write them maybe in opposite order, triangle of each, of uh, 
the multiplicity. So this is a multiplicity, multiplicity of a given triangle blade inside the simplex. So the product of the uh, uh, square factorials. And here, uh, this, so uh, we can take the sign here, for instance, to be uh, just for this purpose. So, uh, so this is a proportional to. So depending on the normalization, they, uh, uh, so up to a scalar, this is the, uh, uh, this is up to a global scalar, this is the, uh, uh, or let's put here the sum of the squares. It's a sign here, and uh, so this is a theorem of Wigner, and this is where we're going to see the uh, higher representation uh, appear. So this is uh, that's a crucial point in this, and uh, um, we have here a gauge which we should write gauge. Remember that for us, a gauge is freedom of choice. And the gauge is that uh, uh, one uh, triangle, the sum of, uh, the, the uh, sum of, uh, of the triangle I and the sum of the square I, where I is some um, uh, label, yes, give the same vector. of the uh, of the tensor product of sigma and i outside so as you can see uh, this is a very precise statement that we have vectors outside and uh, um, the triangle, so if you take uh, here, do you see if you take the sum of the triangles, uh, one on each side, this gives you a left and a right on every face, while the sum of the squares also gives you a left and a right on every uh, face. And maybe I will use uh, here Chase, maybe Chase and uh, William, yes, if you can come for a second here. So uh, this is exactly the pairing. Uh, yes, we need to sit on the same level here. This is exactly the pairing left to right, which is NOPS. One is like this. Okay, I, I wash my hands. Okay. It's okay. There. So you see, one way to connect it is like that. Yes, and the other way is cross. Yes, so these are the squares and these are the triangles. Thank you. Uh, so you see that the triangle connects to the right and the square connects, uh, 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 connects the other way. Yes, so the same, uh, the same uh, vectors on the faces can be connected in two different ways. That's how higher representations work. 
And uh, uh, so now the fact that H, we'll, we're going to call this configuration balanced. This condition, if the number of edges on the sum of the rights is equal to the sum of the lefts, and uh, uh, remember that the uh, uh, so this was equivalent, as we had seen, to the fact that H of xi is equal to zero. Yes. So the invariance to the diagonal element to the weight is exactly the fact that we can continue the, the vectors with blades. So here we have a sum, and the sum, the limits of the sum are the natural ones. We can increase the triangles until we have no, no at least one of the square numbers is zero, and uh, conversely, we can decrease the, tri the number of triangles each time by one until we get no, no triangle left. Please, if anything is unclear, uh, please ask. So now, uh, we come with a condition that E of xi is equal to zero. Remember that that must be an invariant vector, yes? And this is uh, uh, done by letting E act on every face. And here the main argument is outlined, is, uh, is written uh, on the screen. The uh, the uh, uh, E of xi is a sum of uh, the coefficients. Let me uh, try to take a uh, uh, pointer here. So E is a sum of the coefficients uh, times, and then we act with E on every vector. We have to look for it uh, after the course, so maybe somebody will remember. Um, okay, so here we have the coefficient. Uh, So E will send, will act on each A, B, and C, as you can see here. However, these vectors are too unbalanced. They have, since E is moving things to the left, so they have uh, two more E1 than E2, because the, the, if that was a balanced A, B, C. So in order to uh, work with balanced terms, uh, we break the symmetry by putting a, an F. Yes, so we're going to have E of, uh, uh, e of xi is uh, now, here there should be E F A, yes? So E A F B, so, and uh, E A F C. So we work with the, uh, uh, we, we act on, uh, uh, so we first uh, act with a single F just to make the vector balance, unbalance the other way, and then we act with E's. So the net result is that we need to have the coefficient of A, B, C. Remember, these are vectors in the, these are vectors, uh, uh, A is a, 
uh, vector for the first representation, B is for the second, C is for the one in the back. Yes, so uh, uh, the uh, uh, look, once we put it all to E A B C, the net result is that the coefficient of A B C plus the coefficient of E A F B F C and E A B F C that should be uh, that should be uh, equal to zero. And uh, here we'll have the an image, recall that last time we have encoded this way a vector, yes? This was a section of the, um, uh, of the simplex. If you remember at height half, just for illustration, and uh, the blue lines are the squares here, and the uh, red lines are the triangles. So what you see here on every face, for instance, is on this face, it's E1 to the 3, E2 to the 3 on this face. So on each face, you have the vectors of the representation as you see at the very top. Do you see the vectors there? Yes, but each vector outside can be either coming from a triangle or from a square. Yes, uh, or, uh, as you can see here. So uh, this is uh, now, um, in order to show you, so this is a, a representation. Let me uh, see whether it, uh, whether we can see all of them at the same time. So I think we have to make it just a tad smaller. Yes, there we are. So the coefficients here are, uh, so here we're using F, I think. The, the coefficients are just the right-hand side. So this is the right-hand side, the four here. This is the two, and this is uh, a, another four. So um, we have some coefficients, remember, for the, uh, uh, E or the Fs. So when we multiply here this, uh, this uh, uh, vector with a coefficient, the coefficient is a one which is written there. The coefficient is a power of E1. Yes, so when we multiply this four, this four is equal to uh, two plus two. So let me uh, magnify it again. So here's what's going to happen. Do you see you have, we're going to see here you have two plus two, four is two plus two, yes? And these are denominator at the factorial. So if you have the equation that we use is a very elementary one that uh, uh, a plus b over a factorial b factorial is equal to one over a minus one factorial b factorial plus one over a factorial b minus one factorial. Yes, which, uh, uh, so each term here, do you see when we multiply with a coefficient that was described there, decomposes in two. Do you see this one? is degenerate here, so, the, uh, so each of them decomposes in two. And if you look very carefully, then, uh, uh, for instance, this one has in red one to two, and you can see that it's exactly this term. Do you see? So this term is exact. So these two terms are exactly the two terms here. Yes, and uh, this term is one, one, two, and look, it's exactly this one. So these two terms are exactly these ones. And these two terms that are going to be, do you see here in red, one, one, one. And uh, so this is a one, one, one. So these two terms are here. Yes, so once again, these. So the terms cancel. So you have three, three uh, uh, you have six sets uh, of coefficients. 
and each of them cancels with another. That is a proof. But we want to understand now what are these coefficients. Any question about that? I think we went through this when I uh, f uh, found this in, uh, in August, at the end of August. So here is, here is a corresponding uh, picture. Ah, there we are. This is a pictorial course, so we should, uh, we should explain the cancellation now. Okay, so let's write the explanation here. The, um, the gray line is the power of the respective vector. Remember that the vectors are on the sides here. Yes, of the, the vectors of the representation. So the vector is here on the right hand, on the right hand side as you look toward the simplex. Do you see the simplex here? It's written very thinly, but if you look very carefully, there's a simplex here. And we concentrate on the interesting part of it. Uh, the section that you saw before is exactly this section, which, as you see, is at height one half. Yes, it doesn't have mathematical significance. It's done only for visualizing the triangles and the squares. And uh, that way, the whole picture, uh, instead of uh, being something 3D, it becomes a picture on a triangle of edge 3. Yes, so at the top you have triangles, here you have squares. Yes, so you can see that these, the long lines give you exactly this uh, crossing that, uh, that uh, Chase and uh, that William and Chase uh, did uh, and I did before. Yes, so these are the terms in the numerator. Here you have the right side entrance. Here you also have, if you look from from that side, from here, here you also have the right side action, and here you also have the right side action. So it's a movement toward the right. And remember that that's how we normalize the vector, so that when we move, uh, when we act with uh, E, uh, you have the, the value at the arrival, yes? Uh, the other normalization is take the value at the departure, and the, norm the balanced normalization that we had uh, before was to take the geometric average of the value at the departure and at the arrival. So, there we are. And what exactly does... So this, uh, this multiplicity here, let's say it's five, and it may come from three triangles and two uh, squares. Do you see three red blades and two squares? You can see here the triangle in red, you can see here a square. Can you see if you look at it, you can see it very nicely. They're, they're cut in half. Uh, so um, we apply this uh, very simple inequality. And what we find was that if we put this in the numerator as coefficient, what, we, what happens to the denominator here is that each of the terms gets diminished by one. So we should uh, write maybe in the legend that green means that the, co the respective coefficient is diminished by one. So we find the sum between this, co the coefficient for this, and the coefficient for this. Where here this uh, square is diminished, and here the, this triangle is diminished. Yes? Uh, now, uh, let us notice what happens if you have E on one face, which means you move on the, right, on the left. You see on this side, you move toward the left in the front, and you move toward the right with F on the other side. Now, remember that that's exactly the kind of coefficient that, that we had to use. 
Yes, it was an uh, e, uh, e on one and F on the other one, yes? So, so uh, uh, yes, so this means that uh, uh, the move is that we have a tunnel. You see, it means that we change, as you can see here, a square into this triangle. Yes, so we move uh, both of them on the same side. We change one square into a triangle. And you can see here that uh, green means that this square, the multiplicity of this square is reduced by one. And red, and this magenta means that the corresponding triangle is multiplicity is increased by one. Yes, so that's the result of the EF. And we have this coefficient. The coefficient is on uh, the side where we have uh, the F. And uh, now, again, applying the same inequality, the same identity here, we find that, uh, that this coefficient here at the exit, which is computed, by the way, after we do the, uh, the tunnel, yes, will uh, do two things. It will either decrease, uh, decrease the blue line, which is the squares, which you can see here there's a green on decreasing the squares, or, or decrease the triangles which go toward it. Yes, but the triangles were increased by one, so when we decrease them, we'll leave them unchanged. Yes, so these are the two results here. Uh, again, uh, magenta means that the convention is that magenta means that the corresponding number is increased, and green that it is decreased, uh, as we should uh, put for this illustration. Uh, so we get this, this sum of two terms. So once again, here this triangle is increased by one, and these two squares are decreased by one. Or well, here, this square is decreased by one. Similarly, on the other side, can you see here that you enter through the front? Do you see on this, ma on this uh, mouth? And you exit through the back, yes? So this is the first place where you can see the higher analog in nature, the higher analog of the uh, gelfand settling move, which was uh, on a, in a triangle, yes, in two dimensions. This one is in three dimensions, and as you can see, it's a tunnel. It goes, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, 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 you have some leaves, which, so in a tunnel, the left wall moves into the right wall, yes? So it's basically, if you want, it's a cylinder, um, it's uh, the, the usual gelfand settling move times a line. Yes? Cartesian product. And now, look, if we do the same for the third, we get these two terms. Yes? And now you can see that this term will cancel with this one. Yes, they are the same. And they will be obtained with, if we look at it carefully, it, they will be obtained with opposite signs. This term will cancel this one. And maybe you can see what happens to these two terms. So here, these two squares are decreased, the number, and this uh, triangle multiplicity is increased by one. While here, this is increased by one, and these two are decreased by one. So uh, maybe somebody, uh, we're going to uh, sacrifice a minute or two, maybe somebody can describe. Breathing. Hmm? Breathing. That's breathing, exactly. So this is exactly the gauge that we had here. Do you see, we, we have specified here the gauge. Uh, somewhere, I think it's, it's uh, it's somewhere behind. The gauge was that, uh, uh, do you see here, uh, all the numbers are increased by one here. Do you see this was decreased, decreased, so minus, green is minus one, 
redis plus one and you see if you apply uh, if you so, sub if you um, increase everything um, then the greens would disappear yes and the uh, and uh, the uh, so we'll have uh, greens here, yes, where, where the things are missing. So anyway, we'll, we'll get exactly that this term is canceling this one exactly up to... Uh, so the gauge of breathing is the following, by the way, is that the triangles are decreased. So look, this is plus one, so it becomes zero. This one is zero, it becomes negative one, yes? And this one is zero, and it becomes negative one. Yes, while the squares are increased by one. So this one was negative one, negative one, they become zero. And this was zero, and it becomes plus one. Yes, so this uh, prompts exactly the, the form of the, of the uh, um, gauge, as well as the, I mean, even if you didn't know it, you see, this inequality tells you, this identity really tells you that the denominators must be a product of factorials. Uh, only then do they have, so if you take this to be a function of A, B, then you get immediately that that function is a product of the factorials. And uh, this, the fact that these two should cancel tells you that you must have a sum over all the gauge, where you increase the triangles and decrease the... Uh, squares or conversely, and that you need to have also a change in sign when you do that. Yes, so this ends a proof. This is a proof of the uh, Wigner uh, 3J. Uh, any questions about it? Can you explain how breathing is related to non associativity? Uh, the bre we, we're not yet there, so let me, le let's concentrate for the moment just on this uh, proof, if there is uh, any, uh, any question about the proof. So you have seen it here in an example. Uh, so here, uh, these are differential operators. If you want this one, again, uh, is a decrease of the multiplicity of the square by one. And... Uh, and you have seen here exactly how this acts. These are sections of it. And you see each of them expands into, uh, into two blocks. One is, uh, let me, uh, and these two blocks cancel each other. Now I'm going to make them a little bit bigger so you can see them. Uh, look here what happens. Uh, do you see here, this is this four that we use, this four. And you see that there are exactly two and two. These are the multiplicities of the triangle and the square here. And here the triangle is diminished by one, and here the square is diminished by one. Yes, so this is exactly that identity that, that we have there. Yes, and similarly uh, here and similarly there. Yes, so this is this is a combinatorial proof of the Gelf of the uh, Wigner uh, 3J. Now, oh, we we haven't yet arrived there. So this is this is a motivation for that. So um, you, you miss one piece in the proof. Not which really is? in the proof. In there, there's no proof at all. You miss one piece in your definition. You didn't talk about the action of your operator E. This the is the cases. action of the operator but E. The coefficient. Hmm? The coefficient, uh, we have uh, not missed it. It's uh, right there, uh, just a bit. It's uh, here. The coefficient is a power of E1. I have mentioned uh, that uh, uh, there are different ways to normalize a representation of SL2. One is to take... Uh, uh, when you have an operator E to take the coefficient of uh, E1, the power of E1 for the E and the power of E2 for F. Uh, the, the other way, which was balanced, uh, is to take some average of these. 
in which is self-adjoint. In this action, the, uh, the action is not self-adjoint, so, and indeed the, but remember this, uh, the representation outside is fixed. Uh, it comes uh, out to a normalization of the vectors outside. So uh, if you want the actual, uh, uh, the actual Wigner uh, 3J symbol as you found it in the Na National Institute of Standards table, which has a square root, you have to put a factorial here, which normalizes it to the balanced one. So we have done this, I think, when we did the, uh, the representation of SL2 the various normalizations. But this is a valid normalization in which you take the power of the arrival thing. But Professor, you missed the coefficient. No, the coefficient is here. The coefficient is exactly the coefficient uh, of the uh, arrival, do you see? Then, then you missed the coefficient of your normalization of your vector. Yes, uh, this, but that coefficient you see, the, the proof here is that uh, there is a cancellation, that this is an invariant vector. No, Those normal, that normalization, yes, is a no, can be done after the cancellation. That's the point. The normalization can be done after the cancellation because uh, the cancellation, uh, so uh, the... Uh, each uh, Wigner 3J coefficient has a square root of some factorials in front. But those, those coefficients are the same for, will be, uh, those coefficients will not affect the cancellation at all. So, the right normalization, how do you know E is the joint of F? Well, here E is not the adjoint of F. This is a non-self-adjoint, uh, this is a non-self-adjoint uh, normalization. That's a point. The, uh, one can use uh, uh, any normalization. The normalization is not important in the Wigner 3J symbol. I mean, if it cancels with one normalization, it cancels with the other. That's just a normalization of the vectors. It means that the vectors are scaled by something. So the scaling is a product of the factorials of the two sides for the normalization. In this case, E is not the giant of F, then I'm not convinced about your proof. I'm convinced about her proof three months ago when the case E is the joint of F. No, no, no. F, that is why, actually, that is why, uh, uh, that is why in, the, uh, in here when we act with E and F. Uh, so F, uh, there's a single F which is used everywhere. It's to, from the front to the front face. Remember here it's written that we use an, here it's written with E, that we use an E, we break the symmetry, as you can see here. We break the symmetry, breaking the symmetry here. Yes, to work with balanced terms. We use uh, E only on one side, yes. And the normalization of this, since it's used in all three terms, do you see? The normalization of this is, uh, immaterial. So this is a pure uh, cancellation. Once again, uh, if we had used only an E, we would have unbalanced vectors. We used, we used an F first and then we use the E's. How do you show E equals I equals zero? First, you, you need to prove everything in the uh, balanced space, right? Yes. So what we show is that E, F, A tends uh, B tends uh, C plus so EF times the coefficient, let's write it like this, 
the coef of, so, or rather, let's put here the coef of EF A tensor B tensor C plus the coef of F the F A tensor E B tensor C plus coef of F A tensor B tensor E C. It is a balanced vector that this, the sum of these coefficients is zero. That's what we proved. Now you can see that this, the normal, since this is linear in F, the normalization of F of F does not matter since the same F appears everywhere on the same vector. And only the normalization of E matters. And the normalization of E is uh, the uh, one is exactly the left one after the arrival. So it's exactly written here. And this is a valid normalization. Actually, when you do the proof for the, it's written here. The coefficient here is four. Do you see? It's exactly the coefficient of E1. So the power of E1. Uh, when you write uh, actually the vectors in the proof of the SL2 uh, uh, of the SL2 representation, you first get this normalization, and then it's averaged to make it uh, self-adjoint. But this is a valid normalization. Uh, we so. Uh, So the, the final normalization, so if you, uh, the normalization that we had was balanced, namely we took the powers before the move, the powers after the move, and we took the average, uh, the arithmetic average of the two, and then we took square root of their product. Yes? No, no, no. You still need the star condition. You want to prove e psi equals zero. You you compute the inner product with for e psi and something. Yes, but this e can be the representations can be normalized in any way you wish, as long as it's a valid normalization. Why the second formula implies e psi equals zero? When you use the inner product, you already used a joint. The vectors A, B, and C yes. can be normalized in any way we wish as long as it's, the things are consistent. So we can put here the coefficient, a coefficient of uh, uh, B, yes, uh, coefficient of B. B is a vector, by the way, and here coefficient of C uh, here, we are going to have a coefficient of A. And uh, here, we can, we're can we going to have a, another normalization with a coefficient of F. Yes, but since these are, these are constant throughout, they do not matter. I mean, you could put b very big square roots, but, uh, but that would just uh, obscure the yes. function. Why this, this, eco this equality? Why don't we discuss it? We should discuss it maybe, uh, I mean, we're approaching 12.30. Okay, very good. So which one? Yes. The last equality, why that equality implies e equals c equals zero? This is e on the vector f a tensor b tensor c. And that vector is uh, is generic. There is one case which is uh, uh, in which uh, f uh, cannot act. I mean, the action of uh, there is one vector which is not of the form f a, but that case is trivial. So here the, we apply it to the vector f a tensor b tensor c. 
Yes, so we show that the, the uh, I just don't believe it if you don't use inner product. You don't need an inner product. This is, uh, let's see here. Yes, E will, uh, look, E will act by sending xi into this sum, sum of coefficient of A, B, C, E, A, B, C. Up to here we are all right, yes? yes. Uh, then uh, we break the symmetry, so uh, this is, uh, here it should be not E, but, uh, so it should be E, So we apply it not to, uh, oh, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, there is a problem here, just a bit. This is EFA, this is uh, uh, E coefficient of ABC, this is a coefficient of EF. So we apply it to F, so this is FABC and uh, uh, this is uh, just a bit, this should be here F A E B and F A and E C. So uh, just a bit. Uh, let's see. So if we, uh, so the idea is that we don't apply it to the uh, okay, so here we have the sum of the coefficient of A, B, C times C, A, E, e F. So we apply it to the vector F. So this would be F, A, this is E, B, and this is uh, F, A, and this is E, C. Okay, and now... Um, the coefficient the, in the middle is alpha A, B, C. Yes. So it is, uh, what's that? Here we have replaced A by F A. The coefficient in the middle is coefficient of F A, B, C. Yes. Uh, the coefficient of F A, there is a coefficient of F A, but since F A is in, uh, uh, applies only to the vector A, that coefficient factors out. So okay, Adrian, check your proof by yourself, and let's discuss that. Absolutely, later. yes, yes, we should. So uh, yes, and uh, here we have a coefficient of. So uh, once we have such a sum here, we can put the e inside. Yes. So uh, and that's that's what uh, that's what we did. So yes, we absolutely will check the proof afterwards. So. Uh, Yes. Uh, can you see where's my the crystal from my? Uh, it should be maybe here. It fell around this area. Uh, it may have. Oh, it's here. It's here. Got it. No, I got it. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, yeah. No, no, the, the proof is all right, but... Uh, That was exactly, this is exactly that proof. So it's exactly this proof, but I was a, a bit careless here with the uh, E and F. There's no... Uh... Okay, and uh, yeah, no problem. We'll stay and we'll, uh, we'll fix it.
My point is that if you apply the F, do you see it's the vector FA tensor B tensor C? And that was normalized exactly as you wish. So, uh, No, that vector is balanced, EF, the one written there on the blackboard. Sure, absolutely. You want to show your vector E cos C to be zero. This vector is not in a balanced state. Do I use your triangle or left square? You cannot do computation in this space. So you have to derive the equality in a balanced space. Then how do you compute that? You show the inner product of this vector E cos C as another vector with the same energy as zero. What I am saying is that you are right in a way, but uh, that what happens is that uh, if we uh, uh, if we normalize it in any which way possible, uh, as long as we normalize it consistently, I mean the same for all the E's, this is uh, the the proof is all right. I mean, the proof might have an overall coefficient, which I agree with you, that there is an overall coefficient. Mm -hmm. But the only part that differs between the three, that's the only thing that matters. How the coefficient of E on each side, uh, uh, on each of the terms, changes from, because E is the only one which changes position. Okay. Well, well, we'll write it, so no problem. Okay, we finished. Okay. Uh,